Hey everybody, it's Will and uh, Thomas is backstage. Uh, it's both of us from OK Boomer, the podcast. Uh, starting a little something new called Boomer Gaming. Maybe once a month we're going to come up and uh, check out a new game, or uh, you know, just just play a game and you know try to have some fun with everybody. Um, today we're going to check out Video Vortex from uh, Mondoshop.com. Or you, you can find them on Twitter and Instagram, at Mondo, uh, a.k.a. Mondo News. Um, go check them out. Give them a nice like and a follow. So uh, we thank them for providing us uh, video vortex. So... Before we get into it, more, as always, I want to give a big shout out to our sponsor for this video, SpinWiz Comics at SpinWizComics.com. It is a webcomic and indie comic discovery platform. So in case you didn't know, now you know. Go check them out. In, indie and web comics, free to read. That's right. I said free to read. You can download the app both on iOS and Android. Download it and read a bunch of free comics. Check it out for yourself. Download the app on, on your phone or tablet, iPad too, and, uh, you know, read yourself some free comics. Uh, it's good, free, wholesome entertainment. Uh, check it out for yourself. Uh, the link is right in the chat. Uh, the link for uh, Mondo Shop is in the chat as well. Uh, and here's just a quick peek of what the app will look like on your phone. So, we're going to do, uh, I'm going to do an unboxing. Uh, Thomas is in the green room actually setting his up. Uh, we're still trying to figure this thing out. So, there's like this little cardboard strap that uh, goes around the game to keep the box closed. And it's got, you know, some cool artwork on the side, you know, giving you like a little bit low down on the game. There's a... Uh, Video Vortex manual. There's actually one inside the game, too. They gave me this cool Rewind Your Mind t-shirt, which you can't really read because I'm sitting funny and I'm, I'm in a wheelchair and everything. So I'm going to take this off. And this, the artwork, this is, you know, another great product from, uh, from Mondo Shop. I mean, all their stuff is, like, super top-notch. This game is uh, $40, and it's for two to four players. And move my coffee. Uh, opening up the box. So you get, you get a bunch of game pieces. So boom, these... And you have more of them on this one. I got to punch them all out. Are the Suns and they're part of they're part of the game. And this uh, this white thing is actually the uh, the active player icon. So it's kind of like the talking stick at you know summer camp. Can't talk if you don't have the stick. So uh, you know if it was my turn first, I would I would have this in front of me. And then I would pass it to the, you know, it goes around to the left until everybody plays and it comes back to you. And then you have like three unique of these tokens. Uh, once you get one of each of those tokens during gameplay, you win the game. Uh, Thomas and I are just going to play one round. We don't have any idea how long it's going to be. And whoever gets one, the first token will, will just win for now. Just so you all can, you know, check it out for yourself. And I'm going to pop the suns out and my little thing and 
I'm going to like start dismantling this. As you can see, I'm proud of myself because uh, since I came home from being in a coma and not being able to walk four years ago, I have limited mobility, so I'm, I'm in a wheelchair. But uh, yeah, I forgot where I was going with that, but oh well. And there's, there's a bunch of like little baggies and stuff because now we don't need that. I can just put that one in the trash. And you get the suns. <clears throat> I'm going to have to, once I get this stuff done, I'm going to have to move my keyboard so we can set up. Thomas is already setting up. They were supposed to give me like a different one. This is like a, this looks to be the same exact thing, but this one is glossy and this one is a matte finish. Which one is collectible? Woohoo! So this is, this is the game board. I'll set that up shortly. Matter of fact, let me start setting that up now. Um, I'm just going to shift the little things and I'm going to not knock the pieces down on the ground. Here we go. We'll get that out of the way. <clears throat> and this is the game board. Which way does it go? There we go. It goes this way. I'll just move these out of the way for now. So I can set this up over my old ratty Batman playmat from Wish.com. I got to get to my favorite game store here in Mass and get a new like D&D &D play mat. And then you have the, uh, these are like the, the turn rewind dials. These are for, for uh, your life counters. I'll just put this on the side because I don't. I've got like a two and a half foot table here. I don't have much room to to do much of anything. And then you get, you know, for four players, I'll I'll just use this one. Ooh, look, extra baggies. Um, and this one, this opens up. You have to punch things out here, and there's little things on either side that you punch out because there's some pieces that you there's like little glowy cubes blue and red kind of sorta I guess that you uh, you use for energy and something else that we'll find out about shortly. And here are those little game pieces. There is a game phase card here in this little baggie to kind of like walk you through things basically until you, until you get the gist of it, you know? Um, this bag has all of the mutants. Of course, they we're going to show the video in a, in a minute, and it's got a whole bunch of different mutants. They recommend so there's there's medium mutants, low, medium, high. And that's the complexity. Low, high, medium, low, low. Okay. So they recommend uh, when you start off until you get the until you get the hang of the game. I know it's weird not seeing a head. It's the headless horseman. Halloween's over. Um, that you that you just pick, you know, a low 
So I'll grab, you know, what I think is like a cool looking low. So I'm going to grab this mutant. And this is Defcon Hero. I know it's a little, you can see it better out here. So I will pick that one. I will put the, the rest of these back in the bag. I'm sure Thomas is picking his in the green room. He's getting everything all set up professional, and I am just, you know, being a little bit of a hack. And they give you, like, this little clip. And somehow, there you go. And that's so you have, like, this little stand. Boop. And that's, like, you know, it's your turn. It's the it's the your turn token. So they they tell you to put it in this way because that way it looks like a TV screen. But when you're when you're getting ready to get everything together, you uh, you can keep it out and just look at it like that because there's certain things you need to do. And then there's like a whole bunch of cards in here. They're all slippery because I have not unpacked them yet. Um, what I'm going to do now is I am going to bring up oops, it doesn't work on the table. I'm going to bring up uh, a video and before we play the video we're going to go up and just show you the page in in mondo shop uh video vortex is a 40 dollar game uh no need to adjust your tracking we designed a revamped and revised 2020 edition of video vortex rule book that is available for download here and that's on the on the on the site you can download the uh the pdf to your computer plus while well, supplies last each purchase each purchase will be packed with an assortment of limited edition two-color screen-printed handbills featuring art by Boneface and starring mutants from the game. Uh, Thomas and I were comped these games, so since we weren't paying customers, we didn't actually get them. But that's cool. We'd rather have them go to you when you buy the game, uh, if, there, if there's any even still left. Uh, everything everything Mondo does is uh, for a lot of things is is like limited editions, but they'll say so on the, on the packaging and on the you know on the when you look at them on the website, it'll tell you. Uh, rewind your mind and prepare to enter Video Vortex, a complex deck building game for two to four players that takes what we love about VHS and video store culture and smashes it together into an action-packed board game through a radioactive earth. You play as a video-obsessed mutant battling your opponents for control of the wasteland. Each genre-worshipping character must strategically employ their individual mutant powers while battling opponents and navigating game effects on their respective turns. Players spend energy to play special cards, power their deck with rentals from the local video store. See, kids, video stores were these places we used to have to go to rent things before you could just lay on your couch and just stream everything. Uh, I miss the video stores. Uh, so, anyhow... Anywho, mutant powers while battling opponents and navigating game effects on the respective turns. Players spend energy to play special cards, power their deck with rentals from the local video store, and eject chosen cards from play to weaken foes. Runtime, the measure of mutants' health, so that's the life counter, 
is limited and unique to each character. By advancing an opponent's runtime beyond their limit through low fi and high fi attacks, mutants collect. Be kind tokens. Those are the uh, the red, blue, and green tokens, the little smiley faces. The red has one eye, the green has two eyes, and the blue has three eyes. You're supposed to, you're, <clears throat> like if you had four people playing, you'd have to collect one of each of those tokens. Uh, a representative of their conquest. Once three distinctive trophies have been collected, victory is declared by the reigning champion. Uh, this game was designed by Mitch Reichman and Trevin Haskell. Uh, the artist for this was Boneface. Interesting name. And the property, of course, is Video Vortex. So up here, we can get a better look at some of the art. So, of course, that's the box that you saw. And this is, if you have the room, how you actually set up your game. And just to give you a look at, you know, the, the pieces, there's so much in this box, I'm surprised it's only $40. Seriously. So we're going to come down here. And I'm going to max this out on the screen. Like so. And we will play the instructional video for you. Hey friends, so glad you're here. I'm Becca Scott and I'm gonna teach you how to play Video Vortex from Mondo Games. In this futuristic throwback to the days of VHS, players take on the role of mutants, duking it out in an arena of combat designed by Josh himself. Read the lore in the rule book when you get some time, it's wild. Setup begins with the Vortex board placed center. Take the Vortex cards and place the following cards in the top row of the Vortex board as follows. Signal splitters, bargain bin cards, head cleaners, and damaged tapes. My nickname in high school. Set aside all the special interest and staff pick cards for now. Shuffle the remaining video Vortex cards, which can be identified with a top and genre on the top right of their cards, into a deck and place them on the bottom left of the board. Then reveal and place five cards from the deck on the tape spaces to the right. This area is known as the Vortex. Place the eight suns face up below the board. Next, each player takes a player board, a runtime dial with a tens slot and a one slot, two teal energy cubes, one red charge cube, and three be kind tokens. The be kind tokens are the main objective of the game. Once a player has collected one of each type of be kind token from their opponent, they win the game. Players choose one mutant to play in the game. Mutants have a complexity level below their name. For your first game, I recommend a low complexity mutant. Once you're an expert at VHS combat, try some of the more complex mutants. After each player has selected, they gain the cards listed on their supply list and shuffle them into a face down deck. Cards labeled staff pick or special interest have the mutant's name on the list. Look for those to add to each player's personal deck. Place the mutant sheet into the player boards with the runtime and powers face up. A mutant's runtime is effectively their life points. Once the runtime on their personal dial exceeds the runtime on their mutant sheet, that mutant dies. More on that in just a sec. Place the two energy cubes in the left track and the charge cube in the right track. The player who selected last in the mutant selection takes the first player marker. All players now draw a starting hand of four cards from their personal deck. Before we dive into gameplay, let's take a look at these cards. Cards can have a cost in the top right, which is the amount of money needed to rent it from the vortex. A genre, which includes action, comedy, horror, or sci-fi. An energy cost on the left side, and a card type on the right, 
either SP for standard play, which will be discarded at the end of a player's turn, or LP for a long play, which can stay in play over multiple turns. LP cards also have a runtime and can be targeted just like mutants. There's an effect in the text box and bonus abilities like syncing, which activates when two cards of the same genre are active in a player's area, and free with rental, which gives the player a bonus when they rent the card from the vortex. Some cards forward and others rewind the runtime dial. Forward can be used to advance opposing mutants runtimes, inching them closer to death. Rewind turns the dial back for a mutant, extending their playtime a bit longer. Other cards provide money and actions. In all these cases, there's no pieces to track them. Players add these values in their noggin when playing and spin them accordingly. Gameplay occurs in rounds, each divided into three phases. Sun phase, action phase, and end phase. First up in the sun phase. Beginning with the first player and proceeding clockwise, everyone selects one sun card, placing it near their player board. Each sun has a unique power that can be used in the action phase. Beginning in the second round, the first player marker passes to the left and players return their used suns before selecting a new one. Players cannot have the same sun two rounds in a row. Next up, the action phase and end phase occur in turn order for each player. The first player will go through their action and end phases, then play passes clockwise until all players have gone. After that, a new round begins with another sun phase. In the action phase, players can use their cards and sun to forward their opponent's runtime and rent new cards from the vortex. On their turn, the active player may take as many actions as they are able in whichever order they want. They can do the following. Play cards from their hand, provided they spend energy from their trash equal to the cost of the played card. Spending energy doesn't return it to the supply, it's just added to a player's area. Cards effects trigger here, and played cards remain in play until that player's end phase. LP cards will stay even longer. Players can also spend charges to activate a power on their mutant sheet. They can activate their sun power by exhausting it. This means turning it 90 degrees. They can spend money to rent cards from the vortex. Renting cards adds them to a player's hand, which means they can be played that turn. Immediately fill empty spaces on the vortex with a new card from the deck. After a player has completed all their actions, they move to their end phase. They discard all cards from their hand and SP cards in their play area. They unexhaust all cards and their sun, then flip their sun and follow the instructions. Return all spent energy to their track and gain one energy. Gain one charge to their track, two charges if their energy is already maxed, and draw four new cards from their personal deck. If a player must draw cards and no cards remain, they shuffle their discard into a new deck. Players continue with action phases and end phases until all players have gone. Rounds continue with players increasing opponents' run times and renting new, powerful cards from the vortex. Some important concepts. When forwarding, a player may only apply the forward to one opponent on a turn until that opponent dies. If they die, the player can target another player on that turn with additional cards. Excess forward does not carry over to another opponent. Remember, when a player's runtime dial exceeds the runtime on their sheet, they die. The player who dealt the killing blow may take one Be Kind token from the top of their victim's board and add it to their personal trophy area. The dead mutant resets their runtime to 0, zero and play continues because mutants always come back for the sequels. Once again, Be Kind tokens are the main objective of the game. A player must acquire one of each type of Be Kind token from other players. If a player kills a mutant who has no Be Kind tokens on their top area that that player doesn't already have, they may instead steal a trophy from that mutant 
of the type they need, but only in this special circumstance. And that's the basics of Video Vortex. Players continue their forwarding and rewinding until one player has acquired three Be Kind trophies, one of each type, to win the game. Thanks for watching this How to Play video from Mondo Games. You can head to your local Alamo Draft House to pick up a copy. And remember to be kind and rewind, kids. Well, that. was interesting. Now let's see if Tom, has Thomas made any headway with this game? Yes, I have. I have. have you figured it out? Uh, for the most part, yeah. Because um, I, I, I'm looking at this stuff and I'm like confused AF. All right, well, the first thing you got to do, I said, you really have to set the board up. So we got the board set up. And then when you look on the board, it's got, there's four sections, okay? There's mm -hmm. signal splitters, there's bargain bin, then you've got the head cleaner section. Shows you how old this game is trying to be. Nobody uses head cleaners anymore. And then damage takes. Okay, if you look, their cards are actually marked. Let's see if my camera can mark. See, this one says, at the top it says bargain bin cards. See, they got a little purple on them. Really? I don't, I don't, I don't see that. Yeah. You have to look through them all. It took me a minute, but see these, these are marked bargain bin. And then these are marked signal splitter. Well, I have, I have an idea. Give me a, give me a second. I'm going to, uh, put your glasses oh, on. No, no, I'm going to put my other light on cause I can't see anything. So, Oh crap. I'll be right back. All right, so what we're, we're trying to show, we're trying to set this up here, and we're going to show you how we've got your bargain bin cards. I'm flipping them over, but normally when you're playing this, they would actually be uh, on the other way, so you would never see what you got there because you draw from this area. So you've got your bargain bin cards here, and like I said, they say uh, bargain bin on them. My camera's not being the the helping me there but there's bargain bin and then you've got signal splitter which is there these say head cleaner and then these are your damage tape cards so these are the four the four stacks up top of cards that you can draw from and and, and pick from whichever way you want all right. Then down at the bottom, this is from what I got. This is your video vortex deck. Okay. You shuffle the cards together and then you put them out and then you have your a run of this is your vortex. These are the cards that you can pick, use, and then these are your suntrons. So when everybody goes to play, you get one suntron. And like the lady was saying in the video, no two players can have, you know, the same suntron, two two grows in the back. And each one says something different. You know, like this one says uh, forward three or rewind three. So this would be uh, uh, an action that you would actually take in the game. And then when you do this action, you turn your Suntron so that you know it's being used. And when the game, your action phase is over, you flip it and then resolve whatever happens in the end. It says draw on the back of this one. It says gain one energy and one charge. If you already have six energy, gain two charges instead, and then draw four char four cards. Okay. All right. And then, of course, here's like William was showing a while ago, your mutant sheets. I picked this one up, which is Ridgemont, and he's low. And it shows you what's your supply list. These are your starting cards here at the bottom. Okay. Uh, this character gets, uh, he's low, so he gets three bargain bin cards, two rotten tails cards, a system shock, a signal splitter, and three staff pick cards. Those are actually in here. And you'll pick them out. And then they say staff pick or whatever. 
we hope we're doing this right. It's been a, it's been a long time since I've played an actual card game like this. And then on the back, it shows your runtime for your character. Like this one is 45. So this is where you use your little runtime dial. We're going to set it at 40, then 5. And then it'll go backwards and forwards as you need be. Okay, so where did you say you saw the uh, the thing on the cards? To tell you what kind of cards they are? Oh, they're all they're kind of mixed up like this one says see where it says signal splitter this one's down here right underneath the this one's got a one on it yeah i don't see where any of them are okay yeah there's a there's a bunch of cards yeah well they 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 put them in like four packs in the thing yeah but then you know none of them are they're kind of mixed up i had to go through and, and sort them all out Oh, yeah, well, I'm not doing that. <laughs> yeah. Well, what we could do is, like, we could start and kind of show how it, how it goes. Yeah. From the I way mean, we, we've gathered. You really have to break the whole thing apart and start. Um, and see, everybody starts with two energies and a charge. And the, the two energies are green and the charge is red. Um so that's how you start. It shows you your run time, which we've got this here. And then, so here's my, my hand, my started, my, my started cards, which you put over here. And then you would, you would actually draw a card, move my phone out of the way and my Frank Sinatra CD. If y'all want to listen to Frank Sinatra later. Okay, boomer. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, that really come up, didn't it? <laughs> mm -hmm. So here's your here's your deck, and you draw your draw your cards. First thing you do is pick one of these from what I got, and let's say we're going to do this one. Um, and as the cards go by, because we were talking earlier about where you get the money from, mm -hmm. um, with your hand card, you've got these uh, these bargain bin cards. I saw these because you can do but the bargain bin cards, if you look at them, they don't charge any. They don't. They don't cost anything. Okay. Yeah, we can't so see them. There. There there's zero. They they don't cost anything. But if you play the bargain bin cards, which you can play as many as you can, as long as you've got charges, they cost zero. But it says gain one dollar. So let's say I played these two bargain bin cards. There's two dollars, and then I could rent. This movie, this this tape right here, the Harvester, Harvest of Pain to the Reaping. Can you can y'all read that? We can see it, yeah. Okay, and, and it's, it's got the horror. They all have different icons. Some of them have like, you know, sci-fi, horror, in various un other genres. Action, yeah. And when you you play multiple cards together that have the same, the same genre, it. I guess it doubles the effects. Yeah, it's like, they call it sinking. Yeah, so it sinks up. Yeah, so I buy, I rent this card for two dollars because I played these two. Mm -hmm. okay. I rent this card for two dollars, and then it costs me one energy to use. So then I take my little one energy and I say, "Oh, I'm using it." So I use my one energy, and then I can use this card. Okay, and it says, "Huff two head cleaners. If you have two or more LPs in play, gain one charge." And so I would, you know, draw a card, get some here, and then gain another charge from over here. And then you keep playing that way until you move this forward. So let's say, let's find one that's, now they did read, the lady was showing, showing on the video, that you have the LP cards that you can play, which are long play cards. Mm -hmm. And they actually play over multiple rounds. And then you yep. have the short short play cards like this one, which only takes, you know, just one round and then it's over with. Yeah. As, as soon as you end, that card has to go to your discard. The uh, the long pl the LPs, the long plays actually have like a number next, you know, underneath that. Yeah. It's and right on the side. 
Yep, and that tells you how many rounds that card is good for. Yes, and then you can actually, as we were watching the video, she, you you can actually target not only the life of your opponent or the time of this run play card, this LP card, to get rid of it. So, like, yep. this card is gain a charge, and uh, it costs this. Exeta costs one less energy for each mutation you possess. And there are mutation cards. Um, there's a bunch. Um, I didn't realize there were this many cards until this, until we really started going through it. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, and like I said, we've got, there are the eight different Suntrons. And like I said, you can only have one. But once you've got that, once you've made your, you've drawn your cards, you've played them, you've either damaged your opponent or not, then you get, essentially get your, your charges back. And if you haven't, you know, you haven't used them, you get your extra charge and you get your energy back. They don't go away. Um, it's kind of like, uh, I guess you get recharged a little bit as the game progresses. And then as you attack your opponent, the idea, like she was saying, to get your little, the little uh, one of each of these three tokens, they all just look like this, actually. If you ever worked at a video store, they only yep. look like this. They didn't look like this one-eyed monster that looks like a little minion guy or this guy that looks like, I don't know, another monster, something. They just look like this. And we used to have to rewind videotapes all the time. Be kind, rewind. Yep. And Lord, you don't want to talk about putting uh, unknown tapes in the VCR when it's playing over overhead. <laughs> don't put none of them back room tapes in. Uh, <laughs> People would bring in the home movie backroom tapes. But, yeah, so that's basically how you play. But you really need to have kind of be sitting across from one another with your boards out so you can see as everything is progressing. <laughs> what is good about this is they actually do provide. Did you see these? Well, yeah, the, uh, the, the cheat sheet, as we call them. Yes, the little cheat sheet, because there is a lot going on here, um, and that uh, I think this really helps. Um, it seems like once you've done this a couple times, about it a couple times now, but once you've actually played it, sitting across from a person, I think you would uh, it would you would catch on pretty quick. And what's nice is in this uh, in the instruction manual, I've actually got the one that they sent us inside the book. They are kind enough, I'm going to get out here and show you, that they actually do have full examples of play. So, like I said, you probably stumble through it for the first time uh, because of the, uh, the actual number of moving parts here. But once you get it on, I don't, you know, get used to it, I don't think this would be any more complicated than, you know, some of the other deck building games out there. Yeah, the only, the only deck building game that was like super complicated that I tried to play was uh, the original uh, original series Star Trek uh, deck building game. That was really? like, that was like ridiculous. Well, I've, I actually, guess. I've actually got the DC Heroes deck building game and the uh, the legendary one from Marvel. That both of those are pretty good. Well, I guess just to show you how old I am or whatever, the last deck guild building game I played on a regular basis was Yu-Gi-Oh! And, oh yes, I, I played actually, I actually played in tournaments. Hey, I won a couple regionals once or whatever you want to call them, where they have the local... Uh, oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've got some mats. Um... They do have even special interest cards, which are kind of cool. Um, the art is really good on this series, uh, these cards and stuff. And uh, I do like the, you know, it is a little classic thing, the whole video store thing. Um, like I said, we were talking earlier, I, I guess I, I ran a video store for about four years, so it's kind of cool. Did you not get the, uh, the official member? Oh, yes, I got that, yeah. Yeah. It's a little keychain. I haven't even opened it yet. I I had forgotten all about that. Um, it's over. It's over on my counter. I had to move like so much stuff off the table. 
Yes, it's made in Japan, all hand paint. Yeah, and 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 now I can't close my box because it says the Mutant Power Alliance of America. <laughs> uh, but uh, so what are what are like some of the special interest cards like? Oh, okay. Let me look at them. I set them right back down. Let's see. Here's one. It says Justice Juice. It says increase the money and forward effects of your lo-fi and hi-fi powers by one. Oh, yeah. Okay, I'm going to set this to the side so we can go over that. Like, and I'll pull out these other people. We'll go over that. All right. So we got each person you play. Yeah, as I struggle. So you've got Captain. There's 12 different mutants, okay? Mm -hmm. And like I said, they're low uh, in complexity. They go medium in complexity. And then there is a high. I think it was high. Low, 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 medium. Yeah, high. And they all have their mutant genes. And uh, you get your supply list. Looks like each person has a little slight different supply list. So this one, if you look at this guy that we picked for this example we were setting up here, Ridgemont is low. Okay, and he gets he gets three bargain bins, two rotten tails cards, one system shock card, one signal splitter, and three staff pick cards. This guy, his name is the Mutant Gene. That's his name. He's a high complex character. His he gets three bargain bins, two rotten tails, one system shot, one signal splitter, three staff picks, four gamma ray cards, and four mutation phases. So he gets a lot more stuff to work with. And as you progress, let's see, he's his runtime is fifty versus the forty five on the other guy. And his charges acquire one cathode ray and rewind four. And his high five power right here on this guy is it cost him four charges to do it. It's acquire one mutation. If you have all four mutations, you trigger the gamma bomb, whatever the gamma bomb is. It usually ends up making a Hulk. <laughs> this guy is his charge cost for his low five power is rent one signal splitter for free so these signal splitter cards that we set up here so let's say i'm playing i use my i use my power oh there i use my power see i used it it's there and then you go up here to the signal splitter cards which are the first one i rent a signal splitter it cost me one energy and it says choose one gain six dollars or forward six points six spaces and you use that forward on your opponent to make them go to zero yep and then when you get them to zero they die and then you get to pick one of their little their little be kind tokens yep and then but they're not dead then they just set their stuff to zero and then they come back and they keep playing until somebody has it so uh they go to they go to zero and they die and you get one of the tokens yep uh they go they go to zero but then their following turn they rewind and go back to their original thing their but original. Now, yeah but, but now they're you, missing one token yeah and once you get all their tokens you win and they're gone now let's see i showed you a high look, let's look at this medium guy this guy's name is kid gamma okay and you'll look compared to the to the high guy over here that we had where i have him ah, the mutant gene guy right here okay this guy gets three bargain bins two rotten tails a system shock a signal splitter three three staff picks and four justice juice so he gets the justice juice and old dude over here gets the mutation phase of it. so they are different and mm, what justice is juice. Is 
what they serve at the Justice League. Oh, okay. Makes sense. Um, but yeah, I guess so there is a good, once you, it seems like to me, once you've played a couple rounds and as you progress through the game, people would naturally gravitate to one character and then be able to really get good playing that, that specific character. Yeah. And then, then, you know, obviously the higher characters have, you know, better better powers and mutations and attacks. Yeah. Well, then, then the other thing, too, like I said, I'm going to pull up here so you can see my, don't look at my terrible house. But, yeah, so they have better player, they have better, uh, better powers, better abilities. The other thing, too, is as you hit the, the, the stronger characters, I imagine, because actually if you look at the game on the back, oh, let me open, flip the box up. I left one guy in here. Here's Defcon Zero. It says on the back that uh, no, somewhere else I read it. I think it said that they had a runtime of around forty-five to sixty minutes per game. Oh, it might be on the band. But it said that's how long it would take to play one game. And um, what I'm guessing is the more complex the characters are, the longer it's going to take to play just because you're going to have more powers and such. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's it's set up for two to four players. Uh, yeah, they do include... Every, everything you get in the box, is, yeah, they, they, they send you enough so you can have like four people play. Mm -hmm. So, you know... you. You can you can start practicing this and uh, then you know take it out on you know have a nice game night with the family and yeah and see that's so you pick your character and then you put it all in here like this so they see the little and then I do I do like the little spaces to put your powers and all that yeah what's really kind of amazing about this I know we talked about it and you even talked about it in the unboxing. It is a really high quality game. All this cardboard, if you can't see, is pretty thick. I mean, it's going to hold up for a oh, while. Oh yeah, it's 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 thick and uh, and laminated, and I mean, it's nice. Um, I know uh, on the uh, on the Mondo shop page, uh, there is an updated rule book for 2020. Uh huh. So I, so I guess this book, this game, uh. They came. They came out with it, and it was older. And then they they did like some uh, some game updates, you know, after after beta testing and everything. And they did like a, a new twenty twenty rule update, maybe because you know twenty twenty is oh I don't know twenty twenty, and well, uh, and that's the thing we got this, and we've had it. We'll, we'll be honest, we've had it for what about three weeks now, I guess. Yeah. And I, you know, I, I looked at it a, a number of times and I was trying to, to get through it. And we watched the, the video. Um, a bunch of times. A bunch of times. <laughs> I've, I've watched it numerous times. And like I said, the last deck building game I played was Yu-Gi-Oh! But uh, I may go online and check out the new uh, updated rules for 2020 and see if, uh, if, there's, something, if there's something I'm missing. Because uh, like I said, it... It doesn't seem that hard once you get going, but like I said, you really need to be able to sit across from your other your opponent and and play. Yeah, um, I'm, on, I'm on like a, a two foot table and my camera and my mic are on here and a yeah. few other things. and you know I, I I I spent like an hour clearing my desk off to <laughs> to try to set this up and um, the uh, the big thing was I couldn't see where exactly on the cards it said you know, what they works is like supposed to be like four stacks of stuff, but they tell you to leave out the, uh, the way, the way they put the cards together in those four packs. I would have thought that those were the designated four piles. So you open them up and put them down and, you know, they're, they're all together. Um, you know, and I'm like, I go, well, if they're all together like that, why don't you just put them in one big giant cellophane pack? Yeah. Well, that's, that's the thing that I'm, I'm, Dang it. I'm having a little, you know, I don't say a little issue with. Uh, we figured most are going to be cards. Are the same? 
they're the same. They say, uh, like this one says, this one's you know costs zero dollars, zero energy, and it says you want to ski, you want to ski, you get a dollar. This one's a uh, algebra, bro. It's a dollar. This one's kids' cartoons from 1923 to 1939. It's a dollar. Or it gives you a dollar when you play it. Zero energy, you play it and you get a dollar. And then you use that dollar to rent these other bigger cards. But, you know, I don't want to be ugly, but kids' cartoons 1923 to 1939, that's probably like uh, some really cool... Uh, you know, Betty Booth and, and, uh, yeah, that's going to make me like search the interwebs for like old cartoons to watch tonight while I go to sleep. Yeah. Here's, here's another one. Books on video, Moby Dick. Yeah. All right. Uh, the, the, art, the artwork is phenomenal on this. Uh, I mean, Mondo pretty much spares no expense for, you know, anything they put out. Uh, a lot of the stuff, and let me call it the co the uh, the collectible stuff, meaning it's you know somebody else's IP, and they make certain things. It's always limited. Like uh, beginning of the year, I I got the Mondo uh, Catwoman like one t one twelfth uh, figure from Batman the Animated Series that I. Uh, attempted to review and it's my first kind of like you know toy opening yeah and that, that did not go well uh <laughs> but it was it was a phenomenal looking figure and i mean all their like all the action figures that they do are are super limited they uh they usually sell out like in record time uh they have l limited awesome vinyl see see kids vinyl was this big round thing we would put it on a turntable you might know it as a record player <laughs> and we would listen to music on it but they get they they do they they've got like some cool soundtracks they've got the new bill and ted soundtrack but it's done up as the actual wild stallions album oh my god <laughs> and i'm like oh man you know 1993 me wants that so bad <laughs> all right i'm going through this while we're talking and looking so i'm looking at all the all of the cards up here at the top of the board actually say the same thing so all the all the head cleaners say draw a card then eject this card it says forward three then draw a card then eject this card and then the damage tape card says play Immediately when drawn, advance your run time six and draw a card, then discard this card. Mm -hmm. So apparently all of these say the exact same thing pretty much. And the other big stack of cards from the bottom is what's going to help run the game forward. Huh. So. But yeah, we really need to. So I guess one of us is going to have to get on an airplane and fly to the other one's house. And we play. Oh, okay. When are you getting here? <laughs> when am I getting there? I was there last year, you know. Yeah, you didn't come visit or nothing. What the hell's wrong with you, dude? I know. Oh, I had the family in tow, and it was supposed to be some vacation thingy, and yeah, I know. So we want. Uh, you're talking about we want to try to do this once every so often um yeah we want to we should we should probably do some kind of game thing like once a month i've got a ton of games you know what this kind of reminds me of and it's a little bit more complicated and you've probably i'm pretty sure you've never played it um have you ever heard of machi cora nope. okay machi cora is kind of like this a little bit you know it's card game, so they've got some stuff together. But I mean, it's it's not a whole lot, and uh, it's uh, it like a deck building game. It's kind of like a deck building game, but you uh, you get your little cards and you build a little city, and you know you make little coffee shops and stuff like that. Um, nobody dies. Whoever gets the uh, the biggest city wins. I, I think the the first deck building game I ever played was Ascension. 
Ascension. Actually, I think I remember that one. It's a it's an older deck building game. It's basically the uh, the go to model for you know for the game for the for the gameplay. You know, every deck building game is different, but um, Ascension and a couple other ones that came out like you know years and years ago, or you know, basically where they got the uh, you know the game mechanics. That's what I was looking for. It's basically well, where, they, where they get the game mechanics for for the gameplay. Well, we need to go ahead and, and, and tell everybody. And uh, I know you're you're a little older than I am by a year, I think, year or two. Uh, but we'll go ahead and be honest and let everybody know. Uh, back years and years ago, they only had board games, Dungeons and Dragons, and then the whole first deck building game that I ever remember was uh, was it. Uh, uh, the Wizards of the Coast game now. Uh, Magic: The Gathering. Oh God, that 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 oh, Matt, <laughs> MTG will bleed a mother bleeper's wallet dry in like a week. I remember when it came out, and there was a whole group of us, and we refused to play because we all played Dungeons and Dragons about two or three times a week. Um. That, I mean, that, that game is still going, but I mean, when I went back to the game shop, I hadn't played it since, uh, since like their Ice Age set came out. And that, that was probably like about, you know, 15, at least 15 years prior. Yeah. And, uh, with, within a year, I, I think I probably dropped like 2K. Good God buying cards and, and sets well you, you yeah. buy the you buy the you buy yourself a booster box when they come out so you have a better chance of getting stuff and then the cards you want you know aren't in there uh and then you got to go buy the cards and of course the only cards anybody wants are all the ones that are you know you get people that hang out at the hang out at the shops and then they order and they buy like a case you know they all go in for like a case of the boosters and they go through and they shuffle through all the cards and they get all like the, all the high end cards and they, they put them together. And before they go to, before they go to sleep, this is all on a 24 hour period. They list them all on fee bay and, uh, yeah. and you know, cause they're, especially when they're brand new and they, they blow them out. Um, this game, I mean, I gotta give this, I gotta give this game like five stars one, you know, Come, coming off coming off the boomer crew uh this has got to get five stars because it's bringing us back to the days of the video store and uh you know in a post-apocalyptic world with with these mutants so it's you know as comic book guys it's, it's got like you know a little bit of mad max a little bit of uh a little bit of uh x-men going you know a little 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 touch of class from the x-men and you know, a few other things. There's there's uh, great game pieces in there. There's there's great lore. And in the video, she said somewhere in the book, if you read like the backstories on on like some of like the characters and stuff. The, that's in the front. Oh, it's in the front? Yeah, it's in the front of the instruction book. It's like five pages, five or six pages on the world lore. Yeah, the, the lore is supposed to be hilarious. The other thing too, like uh, talking about all the uh, Mad Max and that, you know, don't forget, uh, or unless you ever played it, remember Gamma World? Man, Gamma World was a Dungeons and Dragons kind of knockoff that was set in the post-apocalyptic future. Dude, I'm an only child. I didn't have anybody to play games with. Oh my god. I mean, I, ha I had the, I had a bunch of cool games when I was a kid, and I wish I had them now because. Uh, in tip-top shape, they're like worth like ridiculous money. Uh, like Hero no, Quest? No, no, no. They're re-releasing that piece of crap. Um, <laughs> like I had, I had the uh, these were all like off of TV shows and movies because that's all we had. So there was like the six million dollar man game. 
think I remember that one. Uh, I had that one, of course. You know, I love the show, so that was great. Uh, I had I had a game based on the, uh, the TV show Emergency, which later became Emergency Fifty One. <laughs> out, out, out of the uh, world of uh, one item twelve, there. Um, I had the Star Wars Escape the Death Star game. I, I used to have to play against myself. Oh my god! Well, well my, mom used, my mom used to work like two and three jobs when I was little because my old man took off a piece of crap. Uh, and when I was like two or three, so but you know, once you know. One, once a once a week at least she would you know she would sit down like af, after dinner she'd have me clear the table and you know go pick a game we'll play a game you know checkers chess any of those you know and it was and it was always the same it was like I either wanted to play the six million dollar man emergency or uh, or Star Wars well the thing that's amazing is like I said Mondo's coming out with all these the new board games I guess that's one of their new lines because they've been doing the you know, the figures, the, the custom art, the vinyls. Now they're coming out with the board games. And what's amazing is board games have come back around. I mean, when we were little. Especially the, in 2020, you're stuck at home. What are you going to do? Exactly. But, but when we were little, you know, honestly, I remember a time before video games, you know. Uh, I mean, and I still remember when my father went out and he bought an Atari 5200. 5200, 5600, the one with the wood casing on it. 2600. 2600. Wow. Well, I gave it, uh, I gave it an extra 3000 there. It didn't need. But the, the Atari 2600, before that, but we always played board games. And I remember my father, we played board games together. We played, well, you know, Monopoly, still one of my favorite games of all time, but nobody plays. I had Pong. Pong. But I had, I had like, my mother bought me like a generic thing of Pong. So yeah. the, the the game and the controller was like about this big. <laughs> so there was like a metal joist, little mini metal joystick on like either end. Yeah. And it was three games in one. It was tennis, soccer, and hockey. In hockey, the little round square would stick to your little paddle thingy. And... and you know, it was great, but it would, you know, it would also uh, burn into the screen and destroy any TV you put it on. Yes, uh, all those old games do. So with the Atari 2600, but uh, I think it might be Atari is, is releasing uh, like a small handheld plug-in, new plug-in version of, of Pong that's supposed to be coming out. And I'm like... I go, that's cool, but if it's more than $25, I'm not interested. Well, the, the other thing where we're talking about classic video game consoles coming back, don't forget that Atari actually just announced that they're releasing a new Atari console. It's supposed to hit uh, shelves to 300 and something dollars. I can't remember. Three something. Um, and it's coming out at the same time as the Xbox, uh, Xbox X and the PlayStation 5. Uh, I don't know of any games that they've announced for it yet, but uh, apparently you can um, double flash on the new Atari and put a, another operating system on it. So you could actually use it as a little mini computer. But now, why, why not just use your computer? Uh, uh, I, I've been a, you know, for like the last like 15 years, I've been, I've been a PC gamer. I'm like, I got a I got the good version of uh, PS3, and I still have it. And you know, once I get some of my tables back from my buddy, I'm gonna set up the TV I got for Christmas for free. And yeah. Free, yay! Uh, and and hook hook that back back up there. And the main re the main reason I have that is I can play any movie on the market with that. Yeah. And you know, I've got I've got a slew of games for that, and you know, somewhere in storage, and hopefully I'll get the. Hope, I'm looking hopefully to get the green light so they can hire that moving company to uh, grab all my stuff out of my buddy Mike's house and and bring it all up here. Um, 
but I've got an original Xbox because I thought it was the X. I thought it was the new Xbox, and it turns out it was just the original Xbox. Because <laughs> just before they were gonna release the uh, the 360, you know, the version with the red ring of death, uh, yeah. I was I was in Best Buy, and they had this cool looking Halo exclusive version of Xbox. And it was on sale cheap. And I'm like, ooh, people don't know this is out. Ooh. And I found out it's just the regular Xbox. And I'm like, damn. Uh, but I did like the controllers better. They were, you know, they were more for, so, shall we say, mature hands. Yeah. Because the, uh, the, the PlayStation controller is like, yeah. I'm like, why am I wrist touching? Well, I got, well, I'm holding controller with two different hands you know um but the, i like the controllers better and there were so what they what they would do is they would they would release certain games for playstation and then they would release other games just for xbox but that would be for like only like a short window of time like you know a three-month window and then the other the other company would get the you know they would have an exclusive right to say you know Say like a Justice League game, yeah, and then you know the other guys would get it like three months later, and so I bought an Xbox and I had the I had the I bought the I bought the PS3. It was the last one of the good versions that you know up converted everything, and you know uh, this one will play um, everything from. You know the original PlayStation on up, and I'm like, "Aren't you going to get the PS5?" I go, "Hell no!" That money? Mm -mm. I mean, I want to. I want to play that new uh, that new Arkham Knights uh, game where it's it's co op and Batman is supposedly dead, yeah. and you can have up to four up to four players co oping, and you get you get Batgirl, Nightwing. Red Robin, not Damien. And uh and Red Hood. So they've all got their special moves and stuff, and you could you could co-op playing them all. Uh they announced it. it's coming out like probably next, you know, beginning of next year or something. And I'm like, I want to play that, but I don't want to play it enough to give Sony like, you know, I don't know what, like eight thousand dollars or some ridiculous amount. Oh, uh, you have to do I'm I'm waiting now for the uh, for all the the people that are jumping on uh, day one for the PS5 to to go away and then it'll come back down to its normal price because oh, it's yeah. sold out everywhere. Um, it's well, see, this is what it does. It sells it sells out, but it's and I don't care what anybody says. There's always for stuff like this. There's always you know any hot item, especially around Christmas. There's always backroom deals at all these stores where, you know, somebody that owns this or is a dealer for that or, you know, whatever, shows up, greases the, greases the palm of the manager. They still pay full price for it, but they get to buy as many as they want and boom. And, you know, so somebody will buy like, you know, like a half dozen of them out of the back room before they hit the floor. And next thing you know, they're on eBay. This, this guy, this guy, you know, an hour later, this guy's got, you know, PS fives on, on eBay for like fifteen hundred bucks because they're sold out everywhere. And you know, stupid people are like, oh, my spoiled brat really wants that for Christmas. It's the only thing that'll shut him up. I'm like, yeah, one of these will shut him up. <laughs> oh God. All right, so we'll have to sit out and figure out what we'll do next month and then uh we'll get together and look at it i've got a whole bunch of board games i can uh i don't know what you've got we'll have to we'll get together i got play. nothing really dang it well my mother gave all my stuff away when i was little so and i've got some stuff i might have some old games but i don't know if i have enough parts to play uh i'm i've got like i've got like a 1970s version of Battleship, and uh, I might have I might have Connect Four somewhere. Uh, 
We ain't gonna play no battleship. <laughs> you sank my battleship. No, we're not gonna play battleship. Um, uh, more, more up to date board games that I would possibly have would be uh, Ticket to Ride, like the train building game. Ticket to Ride is great. Uh, I love Ticket to Ride. I liked it too until I found out there were like you know, you know, thirty seven add ons. No, oh, just play it as it is. You ever play Carcassonne? Who? Carcassonne. The uh, the city building game that's set in France. Oh no no no. Yeah, that's fun. Um, uh, you play Catan. Yeah, I want to. I wanted to buy the Star Trek version. Look at me geeking out. Yeah, Catan is good. I actually got for for Christmas. Um, and it shows you how many games I've got and how much time I have. I have not opened it yet, but my brother actually gave me Star Trek Panic for Christmas. And it's a, uh, it's kind of like a castle game, and you you move your stuff around. But I have not had a chance to open it and play it yet. Uh, my buddy John, uh, years ago, when they when him and his parents moved out of their old house, uh, gave me like a box of stuff from his attic. And it was a bunch of, you know, it was a couple of, uh, a couple of old Mego vehicles that he hadn't, you know, looked at in like 20 years. Yeah. Like, you know, he had like a Batmobile, you know, a broken Bat cycle because all the Bat cycles from Mego all broke on like that center pin in the middle. Um, and, you know, a few figures and some, uh, 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 an, an original Battlestar Galactica board game. I don't remember Battlestar Galactica. You don't remember that? Not the you remember, board game. You remember the show, right? Yeah, just not the not the board game. Yeah, the I, ne I never saw the board game when I was a kid either. But the they ha they have it, and um, they opened it, looked at it. Wow, this is way too many pieces. And then they closed the box and put it up on the shelf. What? Well, Talking about uh, TV show games and uh, and Star Trek. Do you remember Starfleet Battles? The uh, and it was all right. You you've played uh, the old uh, desktop uh, bookcase games where you do the war. Actual very in detailed uh, moving the pieces around. You actually got to go over the terrain, like the uh, military desktop games. Starfleet Battles was like that, where you actually controlled a starship Enterprise, and you know the Enterprise could move six spaces this way or five spaces this way, and you oh, like a like a miniatures game. Yeah, like a miniatures. Yeah, Starfleet Battles. Um, that book was, you know, the rule book was this thick. It was like playing Role Master. There's another one that that's another game that's great that I think. I think that company's out of business too. Uh, oh, yeah, most of them are. Yeah, um, Ice was what it was called. Iron Crown Enterprises. They did uh, Roll Master and Space Master. They were, you know, there was a different attack uh, table for every weapon. But that was fun. I used to have the original uh, Star Trek RPG. And I, I spent like all that money on it, and uh, then my friend and I couldn't figure out, you know, so how's this work? And we figured out how to generate characters and everything, and that's as far as we got. And they sat there collecting dust ever since. Oh God! I, I I think I actually just I think one day I just you know one of my many moves I. Uh, you know, just grabbed all those things and just tossed them in the trash. And like, go, well, this is just that much more that I don't have to bring with me. You know, but I'm I'm toting like 800 boxes of comics around. So, <laughs> well, that's that's the whole thing. I mean, after you get rid of some stuff, and then you realize later on that you I should have kept it or something. Yeah, uh, but you know, my my big claim to fame for tonight is. Uh, Thank you, Mondo. I actually squeezed my fat ass into this uh, Rewind Your Mind t-shirt. Yeah. They, they found a 4X, and I, I haven't fit in a 4X in uh, 
20 years. <laughs> oh, good firsts. <laughs> well, you know, the last four years have just been like, so what's your diet like? Go, well, all I do is eat ice cream and drink soda. Oh, maybe that's why you're 600 pounds. Oh, and, wow. you know, now I'm uh, 389. All I eat is, you know, salads and, you know, protein, yeah. protein and vegetable. Yeah, you like, know what a salad is, right? A salad, yeah. Yeah, okay. want to make sure. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, I eat, I eat those too now. But, I mean, this is a great game. Artwork and construction on it is beautiful. Yeah, like you know, like I like I mentioned earlier, most uh, most board games, because now there's no more toy stores, so you're either ordering it like online from Amazon, because you know Jeff Bezos never has enough money, uh, or you you know you're lucky enough, like I am, to live fairly close to a game store, but like I was telling you on the pre-show. Uh, any kind of board game, even even a deck building game, uh, is going to cost you fifty to one hundred and fifty dollars. Yeah, for a game, and they, they want to know why don't people, you know, play games anymore? Go, well, probably because it costs like an entire paycheck to buy one board game. Well, the the thing too we have to realize is there's there are still a dedicated hardcore board game gaming community oh, yeah. out there um just you know getting in them i mean once you get in a group like that it's and we can be honest i mean even we fall into that to to a degree to comments you know how many dedicated comment groups are they you know Too many. yeah well dedicated comment groups on facebook and dedicated comic books and comment groups in real life are different mm -hmm. uh because uh like i said facebook is just speculators and all this other stuff and i think the board game community probably has its own share of that uh we talked about that with the uh some of the kickstarter games yeah but, like uh by next month between the end of this month and beginning of next month i should have uh i back the umbrella academy game so i should i should be getting my kickstarter version of the umbrella academy game my my issue with these crowdfunding games from you know fairly big companies because they're all you know they're all doing it like uh it, it the dark horse has their own uh gaming arm idw has their own gaming arm uh and they they put you know when they're gonna put a game forward instead of you know putting it up for sale one because you know the only place for it to go is you know dedicated you know game stores and if the crowd of that you know any given game store is like you know they see this they see this cool game but you know they don't know what it is because you know as nerdy or geeky as they might be their only exposure to anything comic booky is either like the MCU or if it's a series streaming on Netflix. And half the time, you know, if it takes, if it takes more than five minutes, a lot of kids are like, eh, bored now. They've got like no attention spans, but anyhow. I got, I, um, I've got, um, I've got actually right here. I'm bringing it up. If you can uh, do that. Yeah. Do that for me. This is the game I was telling you I was thinking about that I want to play that I have not yet. Gloomhaven. Let's blow this up. Gloomhaven. Yeah. Can you see that as it's moving? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's one to four players, six. 60 to 20 minutes it's rated really good the only the reason i haven't yet is when you go to buy a copy you know they're uh, oh it's on sale it's 106 dollars on amazon right now i'm out <laughs> you're out <laughs> i'm out uh, 
I get $106. I, I get like about a hundred bucks a month that I, that I can, you know, well, honest, we all know that, you know, I get a hundred dollars a month, like excess cash. And, uh, that all goes to buy my comics for the month. So that's kind of what it looks laid out. Oh man, I don't have that much room. <laughs> See, this is this is what kills me with with this year because, like, I could just like take a game with me, and if anybody would come into the game store, and I was setting up a game, if if I knew how to play it, I'd be like, oh yeah, so and so, you know, I could I could set up a day and time that I would go in and and teach people how to play like a certain game like say video vortex and you know people would like sit down and check it out and but now they can't do that you can go into the game store uh you can buy stuff and leave and that's it so i don't know how, i don't know how any of these game stores are actually gonna you know stay open through through the age of covid because you know they can't allow anybody to be within six feet of each other then how how is anybody even supposed to play a game? Yeah, I got some. You see, make sure you still see that. That's all the. Uh, we go ahead and look. This is from Board Game Geek. A little close up of some of the some of the cards and some of the other that we were actually showing you earlier. Oh, that's the back of the uh, the actual game board right there. I love Toxic Waste. The Toxic Avenger. Yeah. There's oh yeah, there's your discard pile up here. We didn't get that far. Well, we actually, when you play the cards, that's where they go. The discard pile up there. The eject here. Yep. There's how you set all that up. There's the four we showed those. Mm-hmm. Oh, there there they are with uh, different mutants in them. Haley, Gunslinger, those people. There's the that, back. That's cool too because you can see the back of it. It almost looks like a. It's a video. It, it's a picture of a video cassette. Yeah, it's a VHS. Mm -hmm. But theoretically, it's a VHS. It could be a Betamax. There's the board game all set up. So, so there's your there's your two players. There's all your charge tokens. And then that's how the you know, we showed that. Looks like they got the uh, actual those cards face up there. So I guess they're face up because you don't care what they what they do. <laughs> Because yeah, well, you're thing. supposed to get the you're supposed to get the correct cards in the correct piles. Oh boy, and and then you know you take the pile and you you know you shuffle them up and everything, so it it doesn't matter because they're all the same thing. They're all the same kind of cards. Yeah, those are. <laughs> nope. See if he can play this, we can play it. Yeah, really. Now you just have to get on a get get a week off of work, get some time, and and come up here with a bunch of games, and uh, and we we can we can go live here from the loft. And they they give it a uh, seven point seven, so two to four players, sixty minute playing time. Uh, but yeah, there's where. We showed your video on how to play that, and then there's another video review besides what, what we're doing right now. But yeah, I'll close this out. Come back. But yeah, that's Video Vortex. <laughs> game game's a whole lot of fun. Uh, Mondo has another game that it's that they do uh, expansions for all the time. Which one? Um. Let me call it up. Hold on a second. <laughs> Whoa, I just came to I just came to their main page. They have yeah. the Stanley Kubert collection. Five T-shirts, four laminated lapel pins, infinite ideas. <laughs> and, oh, my God, uh, Migo has a uh, – they just re-released their uh, 
their old monster creature uh, from the Black Lagoon action figure. Yeah, I saw that. But Mondo, wow. Mondo has creature from the Black Lagoon one sixth scale figure, silver screen variant. So it's like all gray tone. It's an exclusive to them. There's, there's probably only a couple of hundred of them. And uh, it's $185. It'll probably be sold out before we get down to it. Who? It's the Grady Twins in enamel, enamel pin from The Shining. Huh. That's hilarious. Halloween Forever stuff. Masters yeah. of the Universe Essential Puzzles. Puzzle Collections. Ooh. Bat they have a Golden Age Batman and Joker set. On Why am I not sharing this? <laughs> Share screen. For people who aren't familiar with Mondo. Yeah. And then I can come back here. There we go. Check that out. The, uh, the Batman and Joker pin set. Uh, they do a whole bunch of tiki mugs. But they're like all like, like exclusives. Yeah, I've seen their tiki mugs. They're kind of. Ooh, there's a Pennywise one that looks cool. And this is this is what I told you. They they do like the vinyl soundtracks. So here's an El, Cam El Camino, a Breaking Bad movie original soundtrack, uh, two vinyl LPs. They look cool. Oh, they're 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 done up like the meth. <laughs> God, I actually was uh was gonna buy, and I haven't picked it up yet. The uh they they've got a soundtrack for uh, the Big Lebowski on here. Oh yeah, they have they have video games. I didn't know they had video games. Whoa, what's this? What? Mandalorian season one original soundtrack. Eight LP box set. Huh. Original artwork. And they call it, you know, each each episode was a chapter. Yeah. Uh, Paul Mann was the artist on this. He did he did all the artwork for these. So each one is like a different, you know. Each picture that I'm scrolling through is like a, a different one of the albums. It's cool. Man, that's rad. Um, you watch season two yet? No, I, I do not have any streaming services currently. I, I've only got free stuff like uh, Pluto TV and uh, 2B TUBI. Uh, games and puzzles. Let's go to games and puzzles. Here we go. Oh, cool. Yeah, all these are new. Puzzle. Man, I hate puzzles, but I know a lot of people love them. Uh, I know Henry likes them because he got, he, got uh, he got some of the other ones. The Press Room Mad Scientist Puzzle Set. They all come in kind of like test tubes, and they got kind of like, you know, funky stuff. Well, puzzles are another thing that, that with the, you know, with everybody being locked at home and have come back. There's our video vortex. Cool. This. Horfrost. I have no idea what that is, but I would probably kill myself having to do that puzzle. Yeah, because it's all the same color. Yeah. So here's video vortex. Like we said, uh, by Mondo Games. Imagine that on the Mondo site. Uh, $40. I mean, you get unmatched. That's what I was thinking of right here. Unmatched Battle Battle of Legends Volume 1. Huh. Robin Hood versus Bigfoot. And then they have add-ons. See, you, you get like all these legendary characters... You know, from from everywhere, from movies and and books, um, folklore, 
and you know and and you know tv and movies see there's the there's the game board for it this is robin hood versus bigfoot but the way the way the game set up for as far as i've known because i talked to somebody about it um the mechanics and gameplay yeah. make, make it so you can play any character versus any other character because they've got expansions because right here the bruce lee expansion and it comes with a pewter bruce lee figure huh. uh jurassic park in gen versus raptors uh Cobble and fog. <gasps> Might have to check check some more of this stuff out. Ooh, the thing. I watched that movie the other day. Oh, there it is. Is this the game? Yes, it is. The thing infection at outpost thirty one board game. Oh, really? Sixty dollars. That's pretty rad. And you get like a you get a lot of stuff. We'll have to take a closer look at that. There's Marvel Cinematic Puzzle. Yeah, let's take a closer look at this one. Wait a minute. What happened? There you go. Yeah, thousand piece puzzle. Mm-hmm. Here we go back to this. There it is. Go back up. There it is. See, okay. Oh, it's sold out. Oh. So we don't even want to look at it. No, but oh, it says from sixty dollars. Oh, they're being tricky with this with the with with the website. It says from sixty dollars, but when you click on this, it goes to one hundred and twenty. Uh, I didn't see that part. See, that's that's the that's the one fallback to Mondo because everything they do is like super limited. Yeah. So they get to produce a super lim you know, a, a very limited amount of pieces for anything and. They sell out like really quick. So like this Cap Avengers thousand piece puzzle by Rory Kurtz. Also, you know, all this stuff is sold out. Hmm. There's a cool like Cobra puzzle. Stoner parking lot game. I'm sure that was hilarious, but it's sold out. Dang it. So the the trick is, you have to stay at the top of the page, and you you need to bookmark. You know, go to mondoshop.com and and bookmark the page, because and you know check it out like every week, like this right here, Terra of Mechagodzilla Thousand Piece Puzzle by Tom Whalen. Oh, I know that artist. Uh, it's it's up for pre-order. So a lot of stuff, you're better off getting on it pre-order. Uh, Before it comes out. Yeah. You know, here's Unmatched, uh, Buffy the Vampire Slayer. And it only ships to select countries. Um, unmatched. Buffy the Vampire Slayer features four heroes. Buffy will hit you with Mr. Pointy or summon her Slayer's strength for a cartwheel kick. When it's time for backup, she'll take her pick between insightful Giles or reliable Xander. Man, that 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 right there just sounds like uh, I'm playing Buffy and I don't want to die, so here's a meat shield. Dang it. Uh, Spike is a relentless hunter. Yeah, so Spike's in here too. So let's let's take a look at some of the. There's like the little pewter figures, and they're like color coded at the bottom. 
I mean, and again, like fantastic art on like all their products. Yes. Everything I've seen has been great. Yeah, it's all it's all you know, it's all high end stuff. It's not, you know, these are no, you know, no cheap materials were used. I mean, it's all, it's all cool stuff. And they've got, they've got, they give you lists like in, interest, like 80s, 90s, action adventure, all kinds of stuff. Uh, properties, they have uh, Alien. Back to the Future, Buffy, Captain America, Captain Marvel, Castlevania, Creature from the Black Lagoon, Die Hard, Dracula, D&D, Frankenstein, G.I. Joe, Godzilla, Gremlins, Jurassic Park, Mandy, Marvel Studios, Masters of the Universe, Spider-Man, Avengers, The Iron Giant, The Thing, Universal Monsters, Video Vortex, of course, and Wolfman. Yep. So, I mean... There's some pretty, there's some pretty cool stuff. Uh, let's take a look, see what they got for Alien. Do they have anything? Here we go. It's sold out though. Yeah, it's a cool puzzle. It was that. It was that Alien puzzle. But I mean, it's all dark and blue. I'm like, oh, I'm trying. I would be like, you know, if my daughter liked to do puzzles, I would be buying puzzles from here all the time because I know they sell out. But I would, you know, I'd buy, I'd buy like the backing thing so you can put the glue mat on it and hang it up afterwards. <laughs> but yeah, that's, uh, that's that good. is just a quick look at, uh, at the Mondo page. So definitely check it out. Video Vortex, it's a, it's a great game. I've got to go through the cards uh, when I have better lighting. I need a new prescription for my glasses. I'm uh, I'm nearsighted, which means I can't see far away. So if it's if it's like right up on me, like if I'm going to type something on the keyboard and I don't have my extra lamp on, I got to do one of these. Man, it sucks getting old. <laughs> it does, but Mondo, uh, we want to thank you very much for the. Uh, video vortex game that we got to uh do like a mini demo of uh ho hopefully uh sometime next year when uh restrictions open up some uh maybe if 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 tom thomas leaves uh maybe you know jumps in one of his neighbors uh horse and buggy carts and heads up to boston again we can uh you do have amish neighbors right mennonites <laughs> I, I i saw a bunch of amish people on the news the other day that's all uh, they run a market not too far from here <laughs> but i mean it's a great game artwork is beautiful you have a blast it's up you know made, made for up to four four players if you have a huge family you might need to buy like two or three copies because there's a, there's enough mutants, so you know you could actually expand that to like eight people easy. You just need you just need two two copies of the game. Yeah. Just remember, the longer you the more you expand it, the longer it's gonna take. You know what? This is 2020. How much longer can it be? <laughs> yeah. I mean, April lasted for like what six months. Something like that. Oh, it's crazy. Um, I mean, we need to go back to, uh, you know, people need to go back to playing more board games and, you know, having that family game night. Me, no, I don't really have a family. So. That's all. We're, we're all older and, you know, everybody, you know, everybody's got kids and families. Well, I've got a kid. Uh, who doesn't want to do anything but lock herself in her bedroom. So oh, that'll be awesome. so I'm back to being an only child again. <laughs> and I don't know how to play a, I don't know how to play a game like this, uh, a deck building game. Um, there's some deck building games that uh, there are like uh, 
ways to play the game solo. Like so people it's called solitaire. Yeah, or solo. Well, it sounds better than saying, "What are you gonna do tonight?" Well, I'm gonna go play with myself. You know, deck building. What? God. Uh, I know there's uh, there's a you can play a solitaire version of the uh, DC Comics deck building game, and they they've released like a bunch of uh, expansions for it. Except they're not expansions; it's just the exact same game with different with characters. People. With different, yeah, with different characters, and I'm like, so I bought the second one thinking it was an expansion because uh, Legendary that uh, the game company did with uh, with Marvel, yeah. When they do an expansion, it's an actual expansion to the game, you know, and it adds on to it. But uh, DC now they they apparently decided well. We make our movies this way. We might as well make our games this way. <laughs> Dang it. But uh, if you're still hanging out with us, thanks for hanging out. Uh, if not, uh, head over to mondoshop.com and uh, get yourself a copy of Video Vortex today. Um, I don't, I think all the game IPs that they have are like, you know, ones that they've created or, you know, they're gaming. They're gaming uh, developers that, you know, work that are part of Mondo um, created. So they're, it's not, it's not somebody else's IP. This is video vortex is, you know, their own game. So I don't see this game going away. So it's not gonna, you know, it's not gonna sell out. Also, you know, don't wait to buy it just in case, uh, you know, they, they tend to, uh, some companies, was that a cat? Yeah, I've got like four. Oh, four? Yeah. You sure you're married? I'm positive. Okay. Just checking, you know. I remember seeing that. I remember seeing that card for, uh, you know, it was it was in a, in a card slot that said, uh, woman's 40th birthday. And it was just like a whole bunch of cats like walking in a front door. <laughs> Said, "Yeah, we heard you're forty and single." Dang it! <laughs> no, we got we've got four cats. No, <clears throat> no dogs. One. One. Yeah. That's got to be one unhappy dog. He's outnumbered. <laughs> He's blind. He doesn't know. <laughs> well, and we're gonna we're actually gonna come back tomorrow night too, right? For our teenage mutant ninja yes. turtles. We're back to uh this was our first uh our first attempt at uh gamer night. So we're gonna try to do like you know, these like once a month. Because uh my favorite card game, of course, would be uh oh Dang it, can't remember the name of it. Uh, it's it's very popular, uh, and the kids can't be around when you play it. Oh, Lord. You know the game I'm talking about now? Yeah. yeah. It's, it's a lot of fun. They've actually made uh, other companies have come out using using the game mechanic from that company. And they've released like a Disney version. Yeah, you're talking about like Cards Against Humanity or something. That's the one, yeah. yeah. Uh, they released uh, somebody uh, made one uh, that's actually Star Wars. And, but, you know, I don't think anything can beat, you know, Cards Against Humanity. But I know, I know there's a really cool uh, sci fi expansion to Cards Against Humanity, though. Hmm. But, uh yeah so we're gonna try to do uh boomer gaming like once a month and you know see how that goes and uh we'll go from there tomorrow night however we are back with a regular episode of okay boomer the podcast this week we are diving into tmnt number one yes the and somebody asked me well which number one I'm like the original number one. The we're friggin', we're friggin' old. 
<laughs> big oversized ones that you would give your left to own so you could sell it. Uh, yeah, volume one, number one, out of Mirage Studios right here in Mass, Attack, Massachusetts. And uh, actually, the original Mirage Studios is not too, you know, less than an hour drive for me, like about 40, 45 minutes. Um, driven by the old house plenty of times. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna dive into that old oversized black and white from Eastman and Laird uh, tomorrow night. Uh, when are we going? About eight o'clock. Yeah, that sounds good. Okay. So until next time, this is Will, and this was Thomas, and we'll catch you next time on Boomer Gaming and oh.